Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. In front of me I have the Zoom R12 multi-track recorder. It features two inputs and eight tracks that you can record onto. Once you record something onto those eight tracks, you can take advantage of the colorful touchscreen to trim up your audio recordings. You can cut them, you can splice them, you can copy and paste them, or move those audio regions all along your project timeline to build up your songs. You can also take advantage of the built-in drum loops and the digital effects that are on the R12. When you're finished recording, you've got something loaded onto multiple tracks, you can use the mix down feature to then create a single stereo WAV file. But once you've recorded everything that you wanna record and built up your song on the R12, how do you actually get your music off of it? Well, the most straightforward way that you could do that is to remove the micro SD card out of the side of the R12 You'll just input that into your computer with an SD card reader. Once it's on your computer, it's really easy to open up your individual project folders. Those are gonna be your individual songs. Inside each one of those folders will be the WAV files that correspond to the tracks that you recorded. So it's really easy for you to then import any of those audio recordings, those individual tracks into a digital audio workstation where you can work on your song, you can further refine it, or you can mix and master within your DAW on your computer. But what if you don't want to use a computer? What if you don't have an SD card reader and you just want to bypass a computer completely? What if you'd rather just record everything onto the R12 and then move it all over and export it onto your phone or onto your tablet? So that's what I'm gonna show you how to do today. We can just export everything immediately onto an iOS or an Android device. In order to export your content from the R12 directly onto a phone or tablet, you are going to need a USB cable. The type of cable is gonna be dependent upon what your phone supports. The R12, the back of it has a USB-C port, so you're gonna need USB-C on one side of the cable. And then on the other side, it depends on what your phone has or your tablet has. I have an iPhone 16 Pro, so it features a USB-C port. That's going to allow me to use a cable that has USB-C on both sides, and that's gonna make my life a lot easier. If you have an Android device, they probably at this point all have USB-C. If you've got an, uh, an iPad, most of the modern iPads have USB-C. But if you have an older iPhone that has a lightning port, you're not going to be able to use one of these cables, which is USB-C on one side and lightning on the other. So you can't just plug the USB-C into the R12 and then the lightning end into your iPhone. That won't work because of the way that the data protocol is set up. What you need is one of these. This is a iPhone lightning to camera adapter, which is really just kind of changing things from lightning to USB-A usually. Um, some of these also have USB-C, but it kind of changes the way that the data is transferred and it uh, translates it for the iPhone so it can accept a more common USB signal. So if you've got a iPhone, an iPhone with a lightning port, you're gonna need the iPhone camera adapter in order to initiate this data transfer. But once you have your cable set and determined what you need, um, if you've got the newer stuff that just has USB-C on your phone or tablet, that's gonna be the easiest way to go. But you will need to change the settings on your phone. So for an iPhone or for an iPad, you're going to need to go into the settings. And then from settings, you'll need to find face ID and passcode. Once you click that, you might have to enter in your PIN number, but if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see something that says accessories. You'll need to toggle that switch on. This will allow your iPhone or your iPad to accept USB tra data transfer signals from a USB device. So once you have that set on your iPhone or iPad, you're ready to go. For Android users, it kind of depends on what Android version you have and if you have stock Android versus something that's been skinned. But essentially, you're going to need to go into your settings and identify the area that allows you to change the USB transfer settings. You're looking for something that allows you to have USB transfer, data transfer on, which will allow the R12 to communicate with your Android device. So once your phone's settings or your tablet settings are all in order, the next thing to do is to actually hook up the R12 to your phone or your tablet. I have now put the USB-C plug into the R12. And the great thing here, if you've got a USB-C phone or a tablet, is that it can power the R12 through the USB-C cable. If you are using an older iPhone that has the lightning port on it, 
it may or may not work to power it through that camera adapter. Some of those camera adapters also feature a secondary plug, which allows you to send power to the adapter, which will power both your iPhone and any USB accessories like the R12 or a MIDI controller. But if you've come in from just a device that has USB-C to USB-C, it usually can power, power the R12 by itself, which is a huge advantage. So I've plugged in the USB-C cable into the R12, and I'm gonna plug the other end into my iPhone. So I can now have the iPhone run and power the R12. I'll turn the power on, and you can see it turns on, which is great. One thing that you do have to make sure is that your USB cable also supports data transfer. It can't just be a power cable. It does have to support data transfer. All right, once our R12 is on and we've got our settings all aligned for the uh, phone or the tablet, we have to adjust the settings on the R12 now. Now from the R12's main menu, you wanna hit the settings cog in the upper right-hand corner, scroll down, until you find the selection that is SD card. Let's pick that. And now at the bottom, we have SD card reader. Let's pick that. You'll get a signal that'll let you know if your data cable is okay. If you have a USB cable that does not support data transfer or you have some sort of incompatibility with a lightning port with no camera adapter, that's where you might get an error. But now we've established a USB connection between the R12 and our phone or our tablet. Incidentally, you can do the exact same thing with this type of setup on a computer. Just hook up the USB cable to your computer, whether that's through a USB-C port or an A port. You don't need a camera adapter for something like that. You just go into one of your USB ports on your computer. It may load a driver the first time that you do that, but it should establish this connection the exact same way. And now you're using the R12 like a giant SD card reader for your computer. But We've now established this connection between the SD card reader and my iPhone. When, within the iPhone, you can now go into the Files app. And from the Files app, you should be able to actually see that you have your SD card that is now available. By using the Files app on your phone, you can now find your songs, your projects, and within those projects and songs, you can identify your individual WAV files that represent the tracks that you recorded as part of those songs. You can import those tracks into a digital audio workstation on your phone or your tablet, or you can email them to a collaborator friend so they could work on a song with you. Recently, I made a similar video featuring the larger R20 multi-track recorder, and I demonstrated how you would set up a similar connection between um, the R20 and your phone or your laptop. From there, I also demonstrated in more detail on how you would copy files over using the Files app onto an iPhone or how you would import those individual tracks into GarageBand. So if you're looking for more detail, I'll link to that video in the description. You can just kind of fast forward to the second half of that video where I demonstrate some of those additional features. But that's all I wanted to cover in this video today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again next time. All right, goodbye.